Peace, peace. Afternoon, y'all. Sarteca Nefer here with What You Growing. Today's guest is going to be Ian Moreland, a.k.a. Plant Daddy, a.k.a. Master Gardener, a.k.a. 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 And today he's going to show us some of the stuff that he's growing at his house. Um, he does a lot of other things out in the community. He does work on lots of people's yards, landscaping, lawns, um, a lot of consultation work with plants and so many other things. So um, I couldn't possibly show you everything that he does, but he does get down. So I'll show you all a few of the things that he's growing here um, on his balcony. And for those of you who are worried about not having enough space to grow, he will show you that you can grow anywhere with as much space as you have. So without further ado, Ian, Plant Daddy, more luck. <laughs> oh wait, check out his shirt too. Wait. Life is a garden. Dig it. How are you doing today? Um, pretty good. Good, good. Um, Thank you for coming or for letting me come by and shoot you. Man, I'm not even sure where to start. Uh, How did you first get involved with like growing anything? Well, um, I've always wanted to be an entomologist, actually, it's the study of insects. And so I've always been into insects and in the ground. And about 10 or 12 years ago, um, I got a chance to live at uh, my great grandfather's in Encanto. And um, so I grew up going to that house. It's got a really cool yard. There's a million trees and bushes and plants. There's just everything there. There's evergreens, there's tropical plants, there's fruit trees. Um, this is, you know, just everything. And so when I moved in there, the house had been uh, vacant for a while after my big grandfather passed. And so when I moved in, I started, you know, taking care of the yard. I just, what I always do, playing in the ground and stuff. And I started to realize that um, as the new plant life came in, the insects changed. So really, I was just out there trying to catch bugs and <laughs> lizards and shit, and I started to notice that in different stages were different bugs. And so, at some point, I started composting. I don't even know if that, where that came from, to be honest. I, I don't really remember if someone got me doing it, or I was just, just trying to see the bugs. So I just remember I was throwing stuff in these pots on the porch and things were just coming out the ground. Like every time I would plant, every time I would throw a seed in there, it would be bell peppers, tomatoes, avocado seeds were coming up. Just everything was coming up and I was just doing it to see what bugs would come. But then I started to realize, you know, like Dude, these plants are growing and everything. And then someone was like, yo, you have a green thumb. And I'm like, a green, what? What the heck is that green thumb? What does that mean? Can um, I see your thumb? <laughs> Oh, so for those of you who might think a green thumb really means your thumb is green, his thumb's not green, but he grows things, so he has a green thumb. Yeah, they, they, they like to hang around a little bit. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how I got started, like 12 years ago. Um, and then my grandparents had a friend, a longtime friend, that has the most amazing garden. Um, his name's Charles Robinson. He's actually the first black master gardener in San Diego. Um, so I went to go see him and um, when I went there I had these flashbacks from when I was a kid I remember playing there like playing in his greenhouse and, you know checking out all this cool stuff so I went to his house he showed me he gave me a tour he has like three acres in southeast on the edge of like National City in southeast and so I went there and I was wrapped like after I left his house I was like I'm gonna start growing shit like just like that you know what I mean and so at the um at my great grandfather's though we had an orange tree a lemon tree we had a tree that was like a combo orange and lemon because there was another tree on the side of the fence i think they kind of mm -hmm. taking turns on who was in charge so like sometimes you would crack open uh, with like a lemon but it'd be orange inside or you'd get a lemon that looked like an orange but it was sour like it'd be like oh this is definitely lemon. um there's olive trees back there there used to be a tangerine tree when i was a kid but i think it was gone palms, pines, I don't know, just everything. And I like all of it. Like, there's, I'm not, I don't have a specific plant. Well, that's not true. Vermilia is my favorite. 
Bromeliads. I'll show y'all some of those in a minute. Bro. Yeah, bromeliads. The most commonly known bromeliad is from the pineapple plant. That's something people usually identify like, oh, that's, yeah. So that looks, there's a whole bunch of plants that are part of that family. They have cool colors and markings and stripes and polka dots and all that. It's fucking amazing. Um, so anyway, that's how I got started. That was, like I said, 12 years ago. And I've just been trying to grow everything ever since. Um, a few years back, a friend of mine came to me and was like, yo, let's start a garden. And we were like looking around the city for like community plots to like, you know, be a part of or whatever. And like that same day, I happened to go to my sister's house. And she probably got like, probably like a quarter, quarter acre, I think, the whole lot. So anyway, I got to use a good portion of it and the first year we did um watermelon pumpkins it's like in a 10 by 10 the pumpkins are the 7 by 10 no 10 by 15 uh watermelon patch and we did um like a 3 by 8 for cucumbers another I don't know, seven by ten or something with cantaloupe with tomatoes, had a bunch of greens, collards, kale, um, the rainbow chart, cilantro, I don't know, you name it. If it was in the seed packet, I was throwing it in there. We were trying everything. Um, I had my nephew tell me with the greens, so the greens were like all just mixed in together. And so um, that was the first year, and it was really fun. It was a lot of fun. My nephews got involved. Buddy Brandon, uh, we just together we built this like makeshift greenhouse that was way too big. <laughs> we did not need that much space. We realized very quickly, but I will say it was so big that part of the greens ended up being inside of it, and those greens lasted forever. But collard greens are still growing; they're probably like three years old now, and so I still pull collards from those. Um, it's actually one of the few things left in that garden because it's no longer there. Um, there's the collards. A pomegranate tree and a struggling, um, I think it's a ruby, like ruby red grapefruit. Struggling by struggling, I mean, like, there's like one little leaf Aww. that somehow has managed to stay. I think it might have got planted too deep, and it was some, somebody gave it to me, so it already had its own history, mm. but it didn't do that well. Um, but we'll see, you never know. You never know, even if sometimes when something looks like it's struggling or dying. It'll surprise you and it comes back up the following season or a couple it, it weeks. Will, like these. So this is the mint. This mint, I didn't even plant this mint. The lady that used to live in the apartment next to me, she had this plant here. There was a pepper, some kind of pepper tree. I gave it to my grandmother. Something else. Something was in this pot too, but I, I replaced it with the, um, aloe. But this mint dies all the time, as you can see. It's like dried and, you know, crunchy. But it still smells amazing. It still smells amazing. So I can smell it from here. When you have those leaves that have the seeds like the oregano or even like cilantro, when it's going bad, it's not. You just let it dry out and then you can use it in that form. So, like a lot of people buy cilantro, you know, from the store. And, you know, it to, after a while, it starts to go get ugly. I usually just lay it out on the counter, let it dry out completely, and then just crumble it up into a baggie. And now I have powder. dry cilantro, powder flakes. Right. All right. Uh, you know, so I just a little don't seasoning, waste it. right? Um, so anyway, this guy comes back and comes and goes all the time. Mint, I would suggest if you do grow it, grow it in a pot because um, it's the weed in the sense that you can't really kill it. <laughs> if you put it in the ground, it's going to stay there. Yep, and if you pull it out, it'll keep coming back. Yeah, there'll, 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 you'll never get out all the roots. Yeah, the many roots as you pull out, there'll always be some part of it somehow that managed to survive. And as soon as it gets the right amount of water and the right amount of sun, poof, it's back. And so this one comes and goes because I'm not that good at watering this particular plant or stuff up here, which is why I have mostly succulents at home because they can deal with a little bit of neglect. You see, you work with what you got. Right. If you know you don't really remember to water so often, then find yourself some drought tolerant plants. Right. And also when they're stressed, they're pretty. <laughs> So, as you can see, that beautiful orange color looks a little bit like right. my hair. <laughs> so, most people 
don't know this about succulents, but the colors come from stress. So it usually means that there's not enough nutrients in the soil probably, or it's not getting enough water or a combination of those. And that's where you get the reds and the oranges that we seem to, that we all love so much. We love them, but really what you have is a stressed out plant. That's like, please. Like, water hey, I'm me. still right here. Feed Do you me see water. me? Yes, I can handle it, but you know. Maybe I was camouflaged can in I green. Get a drink? Yeah. Every now and again. But succulents, you can do like once a month, once a week. It really depends on what you're looking for, the point of them. Like the aloes, if you want to use it for medicinal purposes, then I would um, suggest watering them more regularly and keeping them in like partial shade and partial shade because it allows them burn. deeper, darker colors and they don't get so yellow like this. I mean, the, the aloes there and it still works, but it's not as bitter either. This stuff tastes bitter. I've, I've eaten it. It's bitter. Aloe is actually really bitter yeah. most of the time. Yes. And when it's not happy, it's even more bitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else we got? This is the lemon. My lemon tree that has no lemon, but it's probably four years old, maybe five years old. And I did no research. I just threw some stuff in a pot and I just learned recently. I don't know when we look it up. That lemon trees don't produce fruit for like 10 years. 10 years. So everybody thinks they want to grow from seed. You don't want to grow from seed. Go ahead, slide over to the nursery. <laughs> Buy you a saying. plant that's already probably six feet tallish. Right. Get, get you a little plant that's about four or five feet. Probably got some buds on it. Plant it in the ground. And in two or three years, you'll have good fruit. And in 10 years, you'll have shade. <laughs> Unless you, you derive great pleasure from growing from seed. Right. Unless there's some, yeah, you just enjoy it. Like, I enjoy growing from seed, but I don't, I don't really care if it makes it. I just like to watch the process coming out the ground. I like to see the earth, like, raise up and the little leaves poke up to the top. It's just cool. It's exciting to me. So, that's why I do it. Biologist. Right. Yeah. Entomologist. This thing's going to fall. It's going to fall. Yeah. The thing is I coming mean, out. one day. Screw coming out. All right, so over here, this is my pomeria, which is be taking a hit from the damn snails. They be tearing this bad boy up. This was milkweed, or what's what's left of milkweed. Um, the caterpillars have eaten most of it, but it's still green, so it's still alive. It looks like it can use a little bit of water. But I just brought it from another from my house and put it in a pot, so it's still struggling to figure itself out. I'm hoping that it'll, it hasn't really yet. I'm hoping that eventually these roots will go down into make their the way, yeah, to the bottom because the roots are all, either all up top and everything. So, so for those of you who didn't know or who don't know, when you move plants, when you replant them in new pots, when you change the location of them, you got to give it time. Yes. You got to give it time to be like, hey, I'm in a whole new fucking zone. Let right. me try to reacclimate, you know, or I'm in a new pot. Let me grow into my pot. Or let me feel how this feels. Same way with humans. If you guys pick you up and travel all the way across the country, you're going to want to get acclimated to where you live before you actually start to thrive. So don't just replot the plan and be like, oh, my God, it's looking sad. Let me just throw yeah, it away. Toss it. Give it some time. Cool thing to do. Right. I've had a history. Of, I've done that plenty of times. Um, when I was first trying to learn how to grow avocado seeds <laughs> from seeds, I threw away a hang of plants. I probably could have 10 trees by now. I have, I don't know, 10 or 12 that were at least, you know, 18 inches started. But what happens with avocados is that they drop the their season, leaves. They drop leaves. Or when they're in bloom because they want the bees, they're trying to attract the bees and the flowers are so small, they lose a lot of leaves in order so the bees can see the flowers. That's some shit you need to know if you're going to grow avocado. You should know that. You should do a little research. So anyway, I learned the hard way after I a bunch of thrown out avocado seed plants, um, but that's how that goes. I learned that in my master gardening class. Um, this is, I don't know what this was. I think it was a pepper, but it didn't make it. This is, um, yeah, this is mine and yours. Remember those plants that we had? Oh, cute. Yeah, I brought them, I took them out of that little pot thing, and this, I think they like this better. Oh, look it, it's all the babies. baby, right. see? Ha, huh, this is where I got the name Plant Daddy from. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> you were taking care of my baby. Right. And you made more. 
Look at that, a bunch of them too. I didn't even realize there was this many because I just water them and let them go about their business. But look, she even got a little flower there. That's nice. Yeah, that's we had a, attended a gardening class and they were giving away a couple things. So at the time, I don't know why I kept it here, but I kept it here so he could take care of it. My plant baby. Dude, this one's cool, right? So he was like... This is the one I've been trying to get to grow a bunch of. My grandma has a lot. So nice. my goal... I could never get enough of them. Nice. I even bought one and had it last year. It died. So oh. just so you know, this is a master <laughs> gardener. Plants still die. It doesn't make a difference. Plants do die. What did I say before? You win some and you lose some. Yeah, your, your title doesn't mean anything to plants. <laughs> <laughs> For real. So, but what I want to do with that plant, I'm hoping to one day, is to have enough and get a big one in a pot. Have a custom made pot of like the Marley's faces oh, on tight. the pot. And so there's like locks. Just, just, Oh, that would be Locks. so dope. Because they're burgundy. They'll get like this dark color burgundy -ish green. Um, I can see it. So any so of you thick. guys watching, don't go and copy this brother's idea. <laughs> I don't care. This beautiful <laughs> thing right here hanging out like locks like yeah. you can you can just see them look kind of so cute it's cute yeah, my grandmother has a pot like that and it's, it's not very big but it's probably like 40 of them and it's just overflowing and i'm like dude this would be so dope if it had like like some like the, the marley's faces on it like the whole like you know bob marley on there and right it'd just be dope so that's my plan that would be dope um, these are my succulents i don't know their names i just collect pieces from yards it's and benny I and larry see how they do this one, though, I can tell you that when it's in bloom, it, it was it was in a bag for a really long time. I don't know. I just need a little bit of it to make it. It's, a lot of it's going bad, but it'll survive. Um, it has this really pretty flower. It stinks. Tracks flies. Smells yuck. But it looks like Patrick. The starfish? Yes. Uh. Like that's the shape of it. It looks like a starfish. It's called like the starfish. Well, one of the names is like a starfish, but that's not its actual name. And, um... The flowers are really pretty, but it does attract flies. I had it, it didn't really, I didn't really smell it too bad, but the flies did come, so I know so. This is, um, Zapote, you say that? Zapote? It's a fruit that they make custard from. It's usually green or it's like black Zapote or the green Zapote. This is the green one. This is actually from Mr. Robinson. He gave me that. Um, just hanging on for your life. It was only like this big when I got it, so as ugly as it looks, it's like it's dying. It's not. It used to get like this tall. But what happened is there's these little scale creatures. I don't know if there's any on here right now. But these ugly little bugs get on here. And they like just... Oh, they're the top. Eat it dry. Yeah. No, that's something else. Great. Now I have somebody else on here too. <laughs> oh, this is like those little mites. The little spider mites. Uh, you see it? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, these fools. But there was these other guys, like the little scales, and they were right. all over it, and they ruined it. Some other pomerium. Yeah, so nature is nature, y'all, and no matter how much you try to control it, at some point, there's going to be some things you cannot control. And it's going to happen, you work with what you can, and you make do. This is a struggling potato or sweet potato plant, I actually don't know. Sweet potato. My, um... A customer of mine just had a, has her own compost bin that she but she throws stuff in too, and she throws all kind of stuff in there. So one of the day we would clean out the bin, and I just took that home. Sweet potato. There we go. Sweet potato. This is exciting. <laughs> um, I think this is the same as that right there. But I forgot what it's called. But this one should be a purple flower. Um, something like Isis. Something, something. But they're native. It's native to. You mean it's the yeah. same as the ones growing up on the long side of the thing? Yeah, the, the white flowers? Ah. It's the same family, but I think oh, this okay. is the purple version. I, I want to say, is flower. this one that has even thicker yeah. leaves, it looks prettier. It's a little bit hardier, but yeah, I think so. I think they're related. Oh, okay. Um, oh, you didn't mean this one. You meant uh, this one. This is, yeah, this is the plant. Got it. Yeah. So this one yeah. is going to grow like these that you often see in apartments with the white flowers. Yeah, white flower, but the native ones are purple. The ones that oh. are from San Diego's are purple. There's a purple one. Purple. Um, but the same thing. They usually open up at night, which is why you see in the daytime they're all closed. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a few open as the day. Like They're kind of like partially open now, but as the day goes on, they'll open bigger. When it's a full moon, oh man, they be out like. Wow. They love it, full moon. So I think those are for like moths, you know. I'm going to have to check that out because I never noticed that. 
Yeah. Um. So my bromeliads, my prize. His bromes. So this one is a pineapple plant. Uh, eventually, a pineapple will come from the top here, and you get fruit. Um. Look at that, guys. There's a pineapple gonna be in there. So this right here, you can usually tell. Pineapple plants always have like these little serrated teeth. That's how I knew it was starting to get mature enough to to possibly grow. Because when I first had it, it was. I mean, this is a pineapple top. I literally cut the pineapple top off. That's what I was going to ask you. So, for those of you who don't know, you can recycle your old foods, fruits, some of them. So, what he was just talking about doing, he cut off the top of his pineapple, ate the pineapple, and replanted just the top, like, maybe, probably, like, this much. Yeah. Just as long as you cover the whatever the part of the fruit, fruit cover that bury that part. And then if you... He was saying about the serrated edges. If you can see right here, this is kind of like pokey. And it's just like your pineapple when you bring it home from the store, how it's kind of pokey and you can scratch yourself with it. Right. That's what he was saying. So that's yeah. how you know so that I know it's, it's mature enough that hopefully it'll be producing in the next year or so. Because they say from the top, it takes like up to a year or two, just depending on the plant and you know how well it's here. I can tell you right now, this was not taken very, taking care of very well in the beginning. This wasn't the house. It's not doing well. And I eventually just put it out here because my grandmother has like seven she bought one plant ate the fruit after it grew fruit and she's been planting the tops ever, ever since. since oh that's so seven. smart and so she has I, a bunch and they produce like one of her plants has multiple plants on it and they have multiple pineapples coming out yeah wow. it's awesome um so that's the vermilia and that's my favorite or that's the most common vermilia this one was actually given to you by another master gardener, and it turns out that they got it from Mr. Robinson. Wow, so, small ass San Diego. Right. So there was flowers, and they're really pretty when it's in bloom. It's, they were pink, and they have these like really blue, cool blue tassels. It's pretty dope. So this is the baby. This one just got here. This one was not here when I got the plant. It was just this one. This one bloomed, and then the baby came shortly after. And actually, wow, look, another one. I just noticed. Is I never you? realized what the name of them was, but I do have one of these growing in my room. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized because it looks just like this guy right here. Yeah, so this is bromeliad. So my, I got three. I'm and as y'all can see, I know he mentioned bromeliads were his fave, but they're all up close yeah. to the door. He doesn't leave any down there. No. So, and this is coming from someone who's very trusting, but but his bros, <laughs> oh yeah, are close. Yeah, but also too is because of this is the perfect environment. Shade. So, they get mostly shade because most of these plants grow in like tropical environments where they get indirect sunlight because the plants, the trees above trees. them are 100 feet tall. Right. So light does get through, but it's, it's small. And so that's why I have them here because the light in the morning, it's the sun's here for about an hour or two. By like 10 o'clock, it's only partially sun. By then, you know, by now there's no sun. So they don't get burned up. So this is also a bromeliad. Um, you can see this one has got the, the stripes, got the colors, there's flowers inside. That's right here, cute. this is a, this one here actually has the one in bloom. See the little pink flowers sticking up right there. Um, there was like five the other day, so they just kind of come and go. Um, this is a familiar. I have yet to see anything. I actually just I, think I got this from someone's yard. I had a customer that had so much overgrown plants that when we started clearing stuff out, some of the plants weren't even there. Were enough. It was just sitting like it was alive, but it wasn't plot. It wasn't in the ground. They have no roots, but there was enough moisture that it was like just kind of barely hanging on. It was really yellow. So it's coming around, it's getting green. Um, this one right here, you can see it's from another master gardener. It's got the yellow stripes, the pink stripes. This is also bromeliad. I saw one of these in Encinitas, and inside of it, there was a tree frog living in there. So oh, cool. cute. So I'm really excited about the fact that at some point, <laughs> I might get some, some not, nature. maybe not here, but when I, me and my plants move into our house, that you know, we can get some stuff popping like that, that'd be cool. Um, all right, edible things. Uh, the bell pepper plants. There's a bell pepper there. For those of you who love peppers. So I kind of just, I like the compost. Compost is my favorite. So these things just, I throw stuff in there and see what happens. So usually bell peppers are going here. Usually I have a bunch of green onions. Um, but they finally like died out not that long ago. So I'm in the process of redoing. I just cut a bunch of them the other day. I'll show you guys the ones I have cut. But this is all dried out. Oh, I'm sorry. There was one left. So maybe I'll replant this. But they're kind of skinny, so probably not. Um, yeah, this is the bell pepper. This is just green apple. I just remember that as a kid. It does fine. 
you, they'll die out, as you can see, and then new life comes back. So this is why they tell you not to plant these on the hillsides. Everyone thinks, oh, green apple, it's lush and green, but actually, it's just growing on top of itself. So the dead layers, and so it's actually a fire hazard. Yes, people think it's a good way to prevent fire, but it's actually can um, put your house at risk because there's so much dry brush underneath it, and everything appears green. Unless you're doing the top yeah. And then you don't so. even mess with it because it looks green, and then it's five feet down. Right, and it's five <laughs> feet. This of a mat. This is like 18 inches of just ready to go burning fuel, right. and then your whole yard's covered in it because <laughs> let the whole hillside go. So be careful with that. Just something to think about. Keep an eye on. There's a few more peppers. Another plant. This one. This plant's been around for like a year or two. It just kind of hangs in there. I say I kind of water these things at will. They're not like a high priority. I just I like to watch things grow. So I like the way that that one looks like a little button. Right. It's cool. So yeah, there's a few peppers. I get peppers every year. There's always oh, a green one here. So there's a couple greens. This is um. Euphorbia. See the cool little spikes? Not cool. <laughs> it's really pretty. It has these really pretty green. Oh, green. Um, I can get a piece of this. It's dead already, but these are really bright pink. And these are what they call Brax. The actual flower is really small and down inside. So, what else? That's my stag. Um, a master gardener coming out. Actually, Walter Anderson Nursery, I went to the class they had. And Mr. Anderson himself actually did a class on these. He's like 90-something years old. So he owns Water Anderson Nursery. He, he did one of the classes. And so he was giving away raffles to people who he was giving away. I so missed that his class. Turns. And so this was one of them. <laughs> this is the original. These are all the babies that have grown on since. I've got one, two, three, maybe four or five the new ones that have grown on since. And you can take these off and replant on the, their own boards and make smaller ones. This is just a random assortment of succulents that I've probably got from a yard. This is also a pineapple time. But this is what I was talking about, about failure. This is that same plant that I was saying I wanted to do the dreads with. Did not have success. It was in the house also, so I think there was too much water. Okay. Could have been, so could have been. All right, inside stuff. We're doing a quick location change. Another bromeliad, one of my favorites. This is really new. This was a gift from a customer. Um, my inside stuff is where you'll see my failures. <laughs> because I don't pay that much attention to the plants. <laughs> I like things that don't require a lot of attention. So right now I'm working on some stuff. This, as you see, this looks all dried out because it's dying. Because it was, I cut it off of a, oh, a piece of a vine. It's related to the asparagus, um, so I'm trying to see if it'll propagate. You said it's related to asparagus? Yeah, it's nice. in the same family. Trippy, right? Yeah. Um, this is just an ivy. I'm hoping this one will grow. It's doing okay. This is still alive. That's a good sign. This died. I don't remember what you're called. I used to call it tarantula plant because it looks like tarantula legs. I was just going to say tarantula legs. Right, but it's actually called rabbit's foot, I think, oh. which is weird. I guess they get thicker, and so it looks more like rabbit's foot when it's bigger. But it has, it's like a fern. It's a cool fern. But, but anyway, this didn't work out. But because I like spiders, I kept it. <laughs> Eventually, I'll probably just put something else in there. I may put one of um, one of these. So these are bulbs from another type of fern. So I'm thinking I might just stick one inside of there, put a little water, and just have a new fern grow out of the old dead fern. We'll see. Could Repurpose it. Um, this is from Mr. Robinson. Yeah. I don't know why the name. I think a kid wrote the name on there. I think a kid planted this, but he had a bunch. Oh. So I guess. Oh, this Amaryllis. Is, this is. I'm like, I think this is the appropriate name. I think this is Amaryllis. Could be wrong. I don't know what this is. I was telling her earlier, but it has really pretty red flowers when it gets gets going. I think this is a piece from a customer's yard. I trimmed back a big bush. Um, they had new ones coming from the ground, so I pulled out one of them. It's got roots. I kind of want to show you all this, but I feel like this part I was going to say, if it's alive. still kind of hard, I would not pull it. So I'm going to let this, this one seems like it's dying, but I'm going to just let it be. Um, also, repotted, this is from someone's yard. They just, it did. These grow a lot, too. They grow a lot. They grow everywhere. And the thing is, a lot of times when you go, someone has a lot of plants, 
is the original space that they belong in, they end up everywhere else. And so when you're do, like I do landscaping and gardening uh, every day, so I, I get the benefit of taking plants with me all the time because it's overgrowth. It's, in the part of the yard that doesn't belong, or it's, it's a healthy plant, but it doesn't belong in that spot that it's in. It's and they would otherwise throw it away, yard, right? right? It's trash. So, ain't no trash. If I see it, it's right. a plant. I'm taking it home. <laughs> We're going to see what happens. So, I'll be trying this stuff. Um, same thing with this thing. I've been nursing this little stick for a while, and it's finally got a little something on it. And I have no idea if it's going to make it, because this is turning yellow. But well, it'll maybe be, this part will die out, and this will just re. I'm really hoping because it's an ivy, and it had gigantic leaves. It's from a customer too. If the leaves were like as big as my hand, they were like just big leaves. I've never seen an ivy with leaves that big, so I was really excited about getting a little piece and see if I could recreate that action. Um. Oh, this is a. Okay, this guy in here, this avocado, so it's growing from the two stories down <laughs> it's from down here oh i see but it's sticking up through the top so um, this guy just found his way right up yeah who is that come from down i don't know here. what these are i think there's some type of beans that i planted but i really didn't remember so i it was full of them and i just kind of i don't know what it is so i kind of let it go no big deal um this is a resurrection plant this is also from a customer's yard I'm telling you Shouts out to my customers. Y'all really come right with that. Shouts out to all the customers. <laughs> I don't even know what this is called, but it has this pretty yellow, orange flower. Yeah. I'll be right there. That's a customer. Um, the apartment's like two buildings over. I do their grass twice a month. And the lady's been trying. She's always trying to pay me. She's like, you never stay put i'm like it's fine it's like there you go when you see me give me the money right um this is the struggle of the century i never do well with venus me fly either but this is like the seventh or eighth one there was a bunch and they've been dying but they've been growing back which right. is usually i just they just die and that's the end of it so i'm doing something right but i'm still learning um and it takes distilled water that's, that's a big thing. Oh, that might be why. Yeah, I learned I that. And they switch. barely any water. I guess they grow by, like, rushing water. Uh, so it's usually somewhere like a really moist soil. So, and they're native to, like, North Carolina, which I did not know until recently. Me either. They're American. Who knew? Uh. <laughs> um, that's all these. Go oh, these are all the same plant. So these two came from this one here originally, which you can barely see is inside, but it's growing. So all three of these guys are the same. In the same house, they're actually from the same piece. I just cut one piece up into a bunch of pieces, and so I got a few. I'm really looking forward to those. This is the, the mother-in-law tongue snake plant. Those are um, known for their air purifying skills. And I have a few random other stuff. But yeah, don't so I think let's. Oh, let me do this really quick. This is a native. Um, it's an ivy. 